Hey everyone, after my last video on tessellating patterns, I had a few more ideas I wanted to share. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. We saw in the previous video how we can use a vertex group to split the points that are put onto a geometry. So in this case, we have this shape and this triangle. They're being driven by this mesh and this mesh has the following weight paint. So the outer vertices are zero, the inner vertices are one. I've named that vertex group type, and I've assigned it to the, this point separate node. This splits all of the ones that are zero on the outsides to cube.001, and then the ones that are one go down to this object called circle, this one here. They're joined together with this join geometry node and then their output. So in the end, we get this. But what happens if you want to use the same object, but with different rotations or in different positions or with some other altered geometry based on a vertex group? Let's do that now. Instead of this object, I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to change this to also be my triangle. So now I have six triangles. What I want to do is I want to rotate this center triangle on top so it flips upside down and then I want to flip this one and this one upside down. So in the end it will look something like this. But I only want to use one triangle. I don't want to use multiple objects, some pointing one way and some pointing the other, when they're actually just the same objects. One way to accomplish this is using a vertex group as a mask to send each triangle to a different part of our node tree. By using the vertex group as a mask, we can alter one side of our node tree. So in this case, we want to use a point rotate node. And in this case, any points that come through this side will be rotated. I want to choose axis angle and then set the angle to 180 degrees. I'll go back to my object and add a new vertex group. I'll call this one flip. I'll change my point separate node to use the flip group. Then I will go to my object and change the weight paints. As I said before, I wanted the top center and the bottom outsides to be the ones that were flipped. So I'll assign these three a value of one. I'll invert my selection and assign the others a value of zero. One last thing to set on the point rotate node is the axis that you are rotating. Since we're looking down the Y axis of our objects, I want to set this axis to one for Y and zero for Z. And now when we do that, we see our rotations have been applied. This method works fine if you just have simple yes, no, on or off types of situations like this one, where it's either flipped or not flipped. However, you can extend this method to get more fine control over the rotation. To do that, we'll add a few more nodes to this tree. First off, we're going to delete the point separate node and the top point instance node. We can also get rid of the join geometry node. Now all we're left with is our point rotate and our point instance. One thing you can change in the point rotate node is what is controlling the axis angle rotation. In this case, it's just a float, which is this angle of 180 degrees. If I change this, all of my objects will rotate. However, instead of using a float, I can use an attribute. Now just like before, we have our flip item here. I could put in flip into this and use this as the attribute. But what you'll see is that we're not getting what you'd expect. In fact, they rotate quite a bit. Our values were just 0 and 1. So what we find is when we rotate using an attribute, 
Instead of using degrees, it's actually using radians. So this is rotating these either zero radians or one radians. Now all the way around a circle in degrees is 360. However, in radians, it's two pi. Another name for two pi is tau. So we can use this information to help us out. Our vertex group values go from zero to one. So if we want to be able to rotate from zero to two pi or zero to tau, we can multiply our vertex group value by the value tau. Now, if we have zero, it's zero. If we have 0.5, our rotation will be pi, which is 180 degrees. And if it's one, it will be tau, which is two pi. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is add an attribute math node. The attribute math a value is going to take in our flip value. Now, flip isn't a great name anymore because we're going to be doing more than flipping. So what I'm going to call this now is rot for rotation. I'll change this one to rot and I'll change this one to rot. Again, we're back where we started. Next, I want to change my operand type from add to multiply. Next, we need to change the type of the B value from attribute to float because we're going to be multiplying our rotation value times a static value. And here we want to put in either 2pi or tau. One of the nice features in Blender is in a window like this, where you have a numeric input, you can actually type in some constants like pi, and it will automatically change it to 3.142. Or you can put in 2 times pi, and it will evaluate that. So now you can see I have 6.283. We can also take a shortcut. Pi also knows the value of tau, so we can type in tau, and we get 6.283. Finally, in our attribute math node, we want to put in what attribute should receive this new value. In our case, we just want to overwrite the attribute of rot with our new value. So now we've updated our attribute rot, we've multiplied it by 6.283, and we've replaced its value. Now you'll notice in our point rotate node that our angle is set by rot and everything has evened out again. But you might say, well, nothing is flipped. That's because originally our value was zero and one. So now we have our zero radians or tau radians, which is it either no rotation or a full rotation. So now we need to go back to our weight painting to determine what's going to be rotated where. Going into edit mode, we can go to the items that we wanted to be flipped. Now, instead of setting them to one, we only want to rotate them halfway. So we want to set their weight to 0.5. And then we want to click assign. Then when we come out of edit mode, the rotations happen the way we want. Of course, we can do any arbitrary rotation now using this method. So if I only wanted to rotate something 90 degrees, which is a quarter of the way around the circle, I would go into edit mode, choose the item I only want to rotate 90 degrees, put in a weight of 0.25, and assign it. And when I come out of edit mode, you'll see that that item is now rotated 90 degrees. Putting this all together, Here's an example where I use both of these techniques. This control mesh has two vertex groups on it, one for type. Then the rotation group has several different values depending on what we need. In the node tree, you'll notice that first, we multiply our rotation group by tau, and then feed that into our point rotate. That way we can rotate any of the points using the rotation group. Next. I feed those into the point separate node using the type group and then split them into the different types, either the triangle mesh or the cube mesh. And then I use the join geometry to put it all together in the end. 
if I go into my modifiers and turn on my geometry nodes, you'll see that this is the shape that we get. Now if I turn on my array modifiers, you'll see the full result of this node tree and its other modifiers, giving us a really nice tessellated pattern. I hope these two concepts help you come up with some great new ideas for your node trees. Thanks for watching the video, and if you want to like or subscribe, click the buttons below, and you can follow me on Twitter at Johnny Gizmo. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.